I think the first speaker is Juan Javier Montesinos. Is that right? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm here. I'm right hello. Here. So, well, uh, of this session, and this, as you can see, the session has six papers. Each speaker has 15 minutes to present the contents of his presentation, the contents of the paper. We would like to have five minutes for questions and, and so on, for any comments. And then we have to, I don't know, try to hold the schedule closely. So let's start. Let's begin with Juan Javier Montesinos, who who is presented mo presenting modeling and control for a class of nonlinear systems with known affine polynomial control input. Uh, if you can share your screen, we can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, uh, hello everybody. I'm Javier Montesinos and I'm going to be presenting our work and um, modeling and control for a class of nonlinear systems with non affine polynomial control input. Uh, the presentation is uh, structured as follows. First, we will give a, I will give a small introduction to thermoelectric models. Modeling of these models, uh, control, an explanation of the control law we choose uh, for this uh, work. Experimental results, we implemented the control law in an experimental platform so we, have, we can show uh, the accuracy of the model. And conclusions. Okay, uh, thermoelectric models, uh, are based on the thermoelectric effect. Uh, it is the interaction between electrical and thermal phenomena. It consists of the conversion of a temperature difference to a voltage and vice versa. Thermoelectric models, uh, also known as TEM, are solid state heat, uh, heat pumps that require a heat sink to dissipate heat by using the Peltier effect. Uh, thermo uh, thermoelectric models are solid state devices and have no mechanical parts. Uh, this results in a high reliability when compared to other uh, cooling devices. And a thermoelectric model is pretty much uh, uh, a, a semiconductor sandwich, sandwich it between two plates, two heat conductive plates, one plate. Uh, is known as the cold phase plate, and the other plate is the cold, uh, hot phase plate. Uh, it works as uh, it says it works as a heat pump because uh, when a current is applied to the semiconductive element, heat is transferred from one from the cold plate to the hot plate. Uh, therefore, well, when it is connected to a surface, when the Cold plate is attached to another to a surface that heat is transferred transferred from that surface to the cut, to the hot plate. Then the hot plate uh, is also attached to a heat sink, so it, the heat can be dissipated. Uh, the thermoelectric model has the ability to function as a cooler or as a heater. Uh, this depends on the current flow, the electric current flow in the semiconductive element. As the current, as a cooler, it generates a certain temperature on the cold side that depends on the supplied voltage. 
the ambient temperature, and the characteristics of the thermoelectric module. This creates a heat flow between the two surfaces. Between the two phases, uh, the hot plate is connected to a heat sink. Uh, so the temperature of the object in contact with the cold plate is reduced as the heat is transferred from the object to the heat sink via the um, uh, thermoelectric module. Uh, to control the temperature of the cold plate of the thermoelectric model, a mathematical model is required. There are different versions of this model, uh, which can be found in the literature. A particular model of our interest was uh, an equivalent electrical circuit for which the model can be established uh, in a state variables. Uh, a characteristic of these models, of all these models, is that the model is nonlinear and has non-affine control inputs, making control challenging of this type of uh, systems. We propose an extended model for the ter thermoelectric model that contains the dynamic of the power electronics. In this case, is a CD-CD back converter, uh, which drives the system. Uh, by adding this new dynamic to the model, allows us to design the control law with a better understanding of the whole cooling system, including the power electronics. Uh, this has an additional benefit that it is to uh, make possible to relate the voltage, the supplied voltage to the bulk converter to the temperature of the cold plate. So we can relate a uh, voltage, an input voltage, to an output uh, heat uh, temperature on the cold plate of the temp. Uh, the process of transferring heat from one phase to the other is related to the energy consumption of the Peltier uh, cell. So it is possible to associate the steady state temperature of the phase with the voltage provided by the power stage and the consumed current. Uh, the dynamic model in the state variables of the converter is this one. It, uh, the first state is the current, the second state the voltage. We have uh, R as the resistance, L the, is the inductance of the coal, and C the capacitance. And E is the supplied voltage of the converter. The average control input is denoted by U, and uh, this represents the average position for the switch uh, function of the converter. Uh, the thermal capacitance of the templates are modeled as electrical capacitance. Then we well we model the capacity uh, the thermic capacitance of the uh, cell as a capacitor uh, related to the circuit. So the capacitance for the cold plate is C subindex C, and for the hot plate C subindex H. Uh, this voltage is the voltages are equivalent to the temperatures of the cold phase, then the temperatures of the cold uh, and hot plate are modeled as voltages, which, we will which will be called T sub index C and T sub H. These voltages are chosen as state variables for the model. The thermal resistance of the phase that pumps the, uh, that pumps the heat sink is K sub F. The average thermal resistance is theta sub m and is, the re is related by the, the sigma equality. The supply voltage will be related to the current by this equation. Uh, we define this auxiliary variable, which contains all the terms mentioned before, to write the model with the, sink, the electrical resistance of the, sink, the heat sink being K sub C and the amb ambient temperature. Uh, this is the state variables of the uh, thermoelectric model. Now we proceed to combine the two models, the one from the bulk converter and the one from the 
thermoelectric model. And this is the resulting uh, model for the entire cooling system. This model relates the supplied uh, voltage to the of the to the bulk, to the converter and the temperatures of the hot plate and the cold plate. Then our purpose in control for controlling the thermoelectric model is to control the temperature of the cold plate since we are interested in using it as a cooler. Uh, we, uh, well, we have to notice that the control input is uh, for the Peltier cell, for the thermoelectric model, is the, the voltage output of the uh, bulk converter, which is denoted as BC. And here it is, the input for the cell. We can notice that the input is nonlinear. In this case, it's a second order polynomial input. Then this makes it difficult to uh, produce, to tune control loss appropriately, since this limits the, uh, the type of controllers we can use. Uh, well, for control purposes, we propose to use a linear quadratic integral regulator. And since this is an optimal control technique for linear systems, we need a linearization of the system. Then uh, we linearize the previous system, the non-linear complete system of the cell and the power module. And we will have at the end of the linearization, a model, a linear model of this form. Uh, to use the linear quadratic regulator with the integral action, we need to add another, an extra state. We have to extend the state of the model to add the integral action. This is done by uh, extending the model with these equations with the control law being this one. This is the control law. The linear quadratic regulator is an optimal control technique that minimizes this cost functional. And by solving this Riccati equation with this matrices, definite, uh, semi-definite positive, we compute the gain for the linear quadratic regulator with integral action by this equality. Uh, for the experimental results, we built this uh, experimental platform, which is formed by a thermoelectric model, DEC 112710, and a book converter with a frequency of 50 kilohertz, a maximum power output of 60 watts, a maximum current of 5 amperes, and a uh, maximum voltage of 12 volts with a 3.17 ohms uh, average low resistance. The, uh, the experimental platform contains a Peltier cell with this uh, heat sink and is in isolated from the temp uh, ambient. So the ambient temperature does not uh, act as a disturbance and uh, makes control difficult. Uh, power electronics are in this part below the experimental platform. And we use this microcontroller for the control operations of the platform. Uh, the parameters for the model are these ones. These parameters are all obtained from the build uh, manufacturer's specifications of the components for the thermoelectric model and the components of the converter. Ambient temperature was uh, measured and estimated at 295 Kelvin. 
Uh, the model, uh, well, to implement our control, we need our linearization. This linearization is made around the, this point at the desired temperature or 14 degrees Celsius. With this equilibrium point, we have the following matrices for the linear model. And this figure shows the uh, detailed diagram of the control used for the thermoelectric model. We can see there is the thermoelectric model, the power stage, and the controller. Uh, we carried out tests for with the linearized model around 14 degrees Celsius for 12 degrees Celsius for desired temperatures of 12 degrees Celsius, 14 degrees Celsius, and 16 degrees Celsius. Uh, the experiment, well, uh, it is conducted by uh, letting the controller uh, drive the thermoelectric model to its steady to a steady temperature, and then to test the controller efficiency, we open the enclosure of the thermoelectric model to let air at room temperature into the enclosure. This raises the temperature as it acts as a disturbance. Then we close it again, and the controller uh, again takes the temperature to the, its desired value. Uh, for the experiment, the initial conditions are the ambient temperature. And these temperatures, well, since the experiments they take a long time, uh, about an hour or more sometimes, we, no, we cannot uh, replicate the exact, the exact same uh, initial conditions for each experiment. So that, uh, that will be the reason why in the obtained results, initial conditions are, uh, vary from experiment to experiment. And for comparison purposes, we uh, we implemented along the linear quadratic regulator a proportional integral controller. Uh, the linear quadratic regulator will be plotted in red and the proportional integral in blue. This experiment is conducted for a desired temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. And we can see the initial temperature at less than 22 degrees for the linear quadratic regulator and slightly above 20 degrees Celsius for the PA controller. Uh, as I said, the ambient temperature, the initial conditions are the current ambient temperature and well, they are not exactly the same as the experiments were carried out in, at different times and sometimes at different dates. Then we can see that the linear quadratic regulator takes the control, the temperature to its desired value. Then this uh, sudden rise of temperature is the moment we open the enclosure, raising the temperature of the model by letting room uh, air at room temperature into the in contact to, with the Peltier cell, and then we close it again. So the control law can reestablish the desired temperature. As we can see, the linear quadratic regulator has a better performance. It reaches the desired temperature, uh, temperature in a shorter time and has much less overshoot. For this experiment, which has as a desired temperature 12 degrees Celsius. The next experiment is for 14 degrees Celsius. And again, uh, we try the uh, we test the proportional integral controller along with the linear quadratic regulator. Uh, the, the enclosure is opened again to introduce a disturbance to the system and closed so the controller can reestablish the desired temperature. In this case, we have slightly more overshoot than in the previous case. Uh, the, in, well, it is important to notice that in both cases, the proportional integral controller cannot reach the desired temperature in the, at the same time. In, in a short time, it will need more time to reach the desired temperature of 12 or 14 degrees Celsius. 
In this other experiment, we have a desired temperature of 16 degrees Celsius, and the same uh, pattern repeats. The linear quadratic regulator performs uh, slightly, slightly better, but in this case, the proportional integral controller can uh, well react slightly faster and starts uh, start to make the system convert to the desired temperature. And we can say that the controller is capable of, of counteracting the disturbance and returning the temperature to its desired value. The linear quadratic regulator has a shorter convergence time in comparison to, to the proportional integral controller and does not present as much, uh, as much overshoot. And it can be said that it, it performs slightly better. Uh, as conclusions, we can say that the mathematical model for the thermoelectric model is proposed based on an equivalent electrical circuit, which allows to establish a dynamic model in state variables for the book term system. A linearization of the model was used to design the controller. The test carried out showed the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the proposed control technique by allowing the desired temperatures to be reached despite the presence of disturbances that are adequately rejected. Uh, our references for this work are these ones. And Thank you. Uh, that was really all. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Javier, to interrupt you, but we are running out of time. So yeah, I, 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 will, I would like to, to give a little a little time for, for questions, maybe a minute or two. If anybody has a question, it will be nice to hear from to hear of you. Yeah, Jorge, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I have just a question. Uh, why do you use a bus converter if boosts are preferred for application? And because it was easier to implement and the parts were readily available. Just because of that, no, no other particular reason. Okay, um, uh, another one is if there are uh, another way to perform the experiment so that the initial condition are the same for both control loads. Because in the... Um, yes. Uh, uh, well, using a uh, cooling mechanism for the, well, uh, an idea we had was to install a smaller conditioner inside the enclosure so we can control much better the temperature and start the experiment at more or less the same initial conditions, but, uh, well, we don't have the, we didn't have the time nor the uh, equipment. Uh, and well, we couldn't find a, find a small enough air conditioner unit to do that. Another option we considered was to put into a fridge the sensor, but uh, it didn't work. So the, probably the most accurate would have been the air conditioner. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's open. Yeah, uh, well, Thank that's you. the kind of questions actually that I got too, because you were making comparisons and I'm not very, very sure about how did you tune the PID gains uh, in order to have a fair comparison. How did you make this tuning of gains? Uh, it was made with pole placement with using the MATLAB app application. Okay. Uh, online. It was a simulated application, and I'm well. I'm aware the uh, the TI was not. Uh, I think it would have performed better if it was uh, adequately tuned. But well, again, we didn't have uh, much time to do this. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is um, Rafael Duarte from from the Sonora Institute of Technology. He is presenting new results for stability analysis of time delay nonlinear systems represented by exact Takagi-Zugeno models. 
Go ahead, Rafael. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rafael Duarte Costa, and I come from the Sonar Institute of Technology and we present new results for stability analysis of time delay the linear system represented by exact Takeshi Sukeno model. My collaborators are Raimundo Marquez, Miguel Bernal, and Adolfo Soto. This presentation has the following parts. Some preliminary semi results and examples and conclusions. Now I'm going to present a background about time delay system. Time delay systems are very common in real life, for instance, in chemical, hydraulic, and pneumatic setup. Delay can induce. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you go closer to your microphone because you, I, I hear you very far away. Thank you. Okay. The uh, delay systems are very common in real life, for instance, in chemical, hydraulic, and pneumatic setup. They can induce a poor performance in the system, such as oscillation or instability. Therefore, it is important to investigate this kind of system. Consider the following time delay nonlinear model, where fi are nonlinear function, x is the state vector. Tau is a positive constant delay present in the state vector. Different to the system with the delay, it is necessary to define an initial function P of theta with theta on the interval negative tau to zero instead of initial condition. Several words dealing with stability analysis of time delay system under Frequency and time domain can be found in the, in the literature. Frequency domain approach are limited for linear case. They cannot be applied directly to nonlinear case. In time domain, there are two main approaches: the basis of the lyapunov rasomovsky function and the basis on the lyapunov rasomovsky functional. Both can be used for for linear and nonlinear case. Or world consider the second one. A nonlinear case can be represented as a Takeshi Sugeno TS model based on the nonlinear process proposed in Tanaka 2001. The TS representation is a convex sum of linear models blended together with membership functions, which contain the nonlinearities of the system and satisfy the convex sum property. Is valued are between 0 and 1, and the sum of the all membership function is equal to 1. A TS model is an exact convex representation of the nonlinear system in a compact set of the state space. To apply SNAE, first, as we assume that the nonlinear model can be expressed as a finite one, then we need the following the next step. One, Identify the p non constant term in, in matrices Ax and Bx. These terms are the premise variable and taken and they are bounded by its minimum and maximum value in compact set. Two, construe the p parts of waves function depending on this premise variable on this bond. Three, define the R membership function and the product of the members ways function in this form. Four, obtain the parameters of matrix A, I, B, I, evaluate in each vertex of the polytope. Five, finally, represent the nonlinear system as a TS model. Some particulars of using this model, stability analysis and Synthesis of control observer can be done through the direct Lyapunov met method, which leads to conditions in the form of linear matrix inequality LMEI. 
elements are represented because they can be solved via convex optimization technique already implemented in commercial software, for instance, LMA toolbox in MATLAB. Condition obtained are only sufficient. It means that conservatory is introduced in the solution. If the LMA condition are not feasible, it does not imply that the original problem has no solution. Conclusion, our value for the nonlinear system in C. It means that once we have the result, they can be directly applied to the nonlinear system. This representation can be also used for nonlinear system with time delays as in our case. In order to take advantage of the aforementioned, we use this LMA framework for time delay nonlinear system. Time delay this model recall the nonlinear model with time delay are using the ISNI a this representation can be obtained with this form. With the following equation hold. Uh, we subscribe A, I, and A, we subscribe D, D, I, R matrices for proper size. In order to obtain an extended system that help to reduce the conservativeness of the stability condition, the idea first presented a good foot and pistol 2006 is considered first the time delay this model in equation one. One can be rewritten for any beta between zero and tau. Now selecting beta equal to half tau, the, the stage equation in two years in the following form. Using an unaxillary vector x bar with this structure, then artificial extended this model is defined as where a bar with subscript i is equal to this and a bar with subscript di is equal to this. For simplicity, a shorthand notation is a bit, then for or can be rewritten as follows. As in system with two delay, the LMA conditions for the time delay cast are only sufficient. Therefore, there is room is improvement. Conservative have been faced by extension a different way. A. Applicant different integral inequality such as the Jensen or Witten one. B. Adding a free when mat matrix. C. Using more general Lyapunov Krasovsky functional for states with fuzzy or linear integral terms. D. Using a standard system, this word is addressed in the two last directions. Motivation. A result result for stability analysis of standard linear nonlinear system in this LMEI framework is providing this. More results are based on the Apnokrasovsky functional with a no quadratic structure altogether with the Jensen inequality. The main idea of this paper is to extend two results to the stability problems of nonlinear system with the layer rep represented by TSC FUSI model and using an artificial standard system and a free lemma, which an LME condition can be ob obtained. Now, I'm going to present the main result. In March 2016, the following no quadratic Lyapunov function has been proposed, where the members of function will be related to the members of function edge of the system via this integral. The term one divided by alpha is introduced to satisfy the convex zoom property with alpha a positive constant. We can see that the time derivative of memory function will be exhibited different between memory function edge computed at different instants. Then the time deri derivative of PUV is, is written using memory function edge and S bar. Oh, one of the advantages is the fact that, that can naturally incorporate delays in its structure, which could be directly exploited for time delay system and also avoid the problem of handling the time deriv derivative of the so called fusel epinode function. In this world, we take alpha as a delay. 
The following properties will be applied to develop the main result. The first is the Jensen inequality, Jensen integral inequality, which replaces the integral with that expression. The second is the first dilemma, which establishes that the inequality is seven altogether the constant dx equal to zero are equivalent to the inequality in A, where B orthogonal denotes a, a basis for the null space of B. Both are used to get LMA condition in development. Theorem 1, the origin of the TS model, one which with a constant positive time delay tau is asymptotic, asymptotic style if there exists a symmetric and definite positive matrix such that the next LMA condition holds, where gamma with the stride I, J, K, L is equal to this matrix, with the following equality hold. In order to obtain a stability condition, consider the following Lyapunov Krasowski functional. The idea is to use a no quadratic expression in the term of UV1 and UV2, those that lead to continuous in LMA way. In this case, we use P and Q with this structure. Each time derivative is the following with expression. Not that. When the time derivative of PUV appears, we can be rewrite as this expression. Two waiting function and stage which depend on, on the delay Q in red and the stays in green. Three, an integral terms remains in expression. Applicant Jensen's inequality, the condition will be double negative definite both in inequality is satisfied. After using auxiliary vector set, the condition yields in this form. Then the condition yield, where the following equalities hold. Now consider that the extended time delay T is model in phi B auxiliarity vectors vector set can be rewritten as follows. Where B bar W can be expressed as a restriction 12. The restriction in 12 together in equality in 11 can be convenient using the fusion lemma leading to the next expression in 30. The last step is obtain LMA is for this expression, which is possible because the functions are removed because the convex sum property. Thus, the proof is concluded. Now, the effectiveness of the proposed approach is illustrated with the following example. Consider the time delay T is model taken, taken pink uh, 2009 with the following matrix and pay function. Now the artificial extension system 14 years. With the following wave function and matrix, some similar providing a spy purpose. In order to show effectiveness to the stability condition, Table one represents a com on comparison of the matrix delay along within different conditions in the in the literature. Theorem one gives the result with a maximum delay on tau equal to two to twenty-three fifty seconds. We can observe that the theorem one gives a better result than the other approaches comparable there. The reference LMA condition in this world are less conservative. Simulation has been done with tau equal to 2, tau 23, 5t, and in initial function x, theta equal to 1 dot 5 to negative 1 dot 5. Then the tiny evolution of the state is shown in the figure. As suspected, the states are driving asymptotically toward the origin. Conclusion. In this world, more relaxing and sufficient condition in LMA way has been presented such as the solution space of the problem of the stability analysis for the tiny land nonlinear system 
modeling by an exact decision representation of performance previous approaches. The LMA condition have been obtained using a novel no quadratic Lyapunov-Kasowski function and together with an artistic extended system and the Fisler lemma. The effectiveness of the proposal has been illustrated via numerical examples. In this world, the agency inequality has been appeared. Future works is on course to appear recent approaches with different integral inequalities, such as the winter, winter one. These are references. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rafael. Are there any questions to the speaker? All attendees are allowed to open their microphones now if they wish to ask a question. Also, if we have a question to the audience, you can go. Well, I do I do have a question. Well, there there is someone here. Daniel? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I have a question. Is there any difference in considering constant or time varying delays? Yes, I different. But in in our world, we use a constant a constant time delay. It's different approaches. Oh, okay, it's different approach. Yes. Okay, thank you. What what are the difficulties of using a time varying delay in this approach? What do you have to modify in order to use a, a fair time varying delay? Time varying delay. Uh, we have x dot uh, x bar dot where t the star uh, here here chain here is the the difference. But I I don't know I I didn't see I didn't see the the process of the of the vari variable type. Okay, I, so you're, I only you're... only only saw the only saw the time constant. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Rafael. We will go ahead. Okay, thanks. Thank you. With Suresh uh, Tenozi. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you. He is in. He is presenting um, observer design for a Duffing home system with uncertainties. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I do. Can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, very good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm going to present the uh, short paper on observer design for a Duffing home system with uncertainty. Uh, my name is uh, Suresh Tenori, and the paper is co authored by Ulysses Montragon and Antonio Concha. So I will start the, directly to the about the system. Here, uh, in this case, we are going to consider uh, Duffing homes. As you can observe, that it has a lin uh, linear, negative linear stiffness, and it has a uh, cubic uh, stiffness term. So uh, this, due to these parameters, it, uh, this system produces uh, different kinds of dynamics, including chaotic beha behavior. So in this case, uh, we will consider that uh, uh, the, da uh, the damping theta and beta, we, we have a partial knowledge of these parameters. So we, we will call term it as uh, nominal values. And uh, there is uh, the, the system includes some uh, sort of uh, unmodeled dynamics that is uh, represented by the uh, chi. And uh, we uh, we only have the access to the position measurements. We can't measure directly the velocity and uh, acceleration. So we we put these restrictions to the the main system. So uh, 
considering these uh, restrictions, we can rewrite the uh, the main system in the following uh, following state space uh, state space form. Where you can observe that this this is a part. Uh, basically, is the normal uh, due to the uh, nominal values uh, that is the information that we have, and this part is due to the parameter uh, parameter estimation error. The, since we don't know exactly the uh, actual values, so this uh, error uh, the parameter error can co cause some uncertainties. And C is the unmodeled dynamics. F is the external input, and here as per this equation, we know that uh, we only we only have access to the position measurement. Apart from the about the parametric uncertainty, we also put uh, consider some uh, assumptions, which is uh, actually pretty reasonable for pra practical applications. Here, uh, the first one is about the parameters. Uh, here, we assume that the actual and the nominal value, the region of the possible values of the actual parameters and nominal parameters is not. So it, it's uh, it's within the non-domain. And uh, we consider that the unmodeled dynamics T is a smooth and bounded disturbance, so so that we have a, the derivative of this dynamics is bounded. So that is required for the observer design. So th these these are the two uh, two assumptions on the uncertainties. Uh, as I mentioned before, these are reason reasonable in in practical sense. And the uh, objective is like. Uh, it for in this case we are going to design is like we we have the we have the position measurement so also we have some uncertainties the objective is to design an observer for uh, estimating the uh, system uh, the system velocity and the uncertainty so that in future we can design some controllers to obtain uh, to um, uh, obtain some kind, uh, kind some kind of uh, decide uh, decide uh, uh, Desired character, uh, characteristics from the system. So for that one, uh, to achieve this objective, uh, we are going to rewrite the state space in in the in this form. So it basically, it's it, it's it's like uh, we are going to include uh, one extended state called X3. Basically, it's uh, the uh, X3 is the uncertainty present in the system, and we have we define the C as the nominal part, the the, the known part of the system dynamics. So we have a, a now we have a system of third order, and for the above system, we propose one nonlinear extended state observer uh, of uh, of this form. Uh, this is like uh, we, we, there are different kind of extended state observers. It's like uh, the mo most classic or the most basic one is the linear extended state observer. In this case, we are we are we are proposing one nonlinear extended state observer because we are using the nonlinearity term uh, as a part of the observer design. So, uh, considering this one, this uh, if you uh, if you take the actual system and the, uh, uh, the measurements of the actual system and the uh, uh, observer uh, estimations, we can obtain its uh, error dynamics, which is represented in the uh, in the uh, in this in this uh, equation six, uh, here you can see in the observer we use a, a omega zero. That's a that's a uh, observer parameter called observer gain. So here you can see only we are going to use one single parameter, uh, and omega zero basically defines the bandwidth of the observer. So if you increase omega zero, that means you, uh, the observer has a higher bandwidth. So that is very important when when you deal with high frequency high frequency dynamics. So uh, here, uh, using the error dynamics, we can represent the uh, the estimation error dynamics in in the form of uh, metrics uh, metrics uh, where uh, A is the linear part of the system and C is the part which includes the cubic nonlinearity, and we have the Another uh, vector which which include basically includes the unmodeled dynamics of the system. So here we 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 put some we can uh, observe that if you choose the omega zero is if if omega zero is positive, the matrix A is going to be Hovitz. So in that case we can find the mu and rho rho is proportional to the omega zero, uh, which can satisfy this inequality. 
And uh, as I mentioned, that the, no, the basic nonlinearity in this in this system is the cubic nonlinearity, which is locally Lipschitz. So uh, applying the, the this property, we can uh, the, the bound we can define a bound for the this observed uh, observed and actual nonlinearities. So that we can write uh, L uh, the difference between the actual and the estimation is less than or equal to one constant multiplied by the norm of the uh, error norm, which is on, uh, since it is locally Lipschitz, th this condition is only sat uh, satisfied within a domain, omega uh, x. And finally, for this one, the uh, lambda, uh, it is uh, bounded uh, that we have shown in the paper, because in practical case, this, uh, this uh, unmodded dynamics is bounded. So these are the assumptions which we are going to use for the uh, to prove the convergence property of the observer. So uh, the, the, the equation seven, we can represent uh, its solution, we can represent in this form. And applying the inequality, we can obtain the, the equation number nine. Basically, it's like uh, the error is less than or equal to the initial and initial uh, value, initial condition of the error and the uh, boundness of the uh, nonlinear terms. So here we can observe that it, uh, this uh, equation nine, this inequality is not explicitly written because we can find there are error terms in both left side, also in the right side. So we cannot uh, solve this explicitly. So to avoid this one, basically we are going to use one uh, inequality that is called ground one, uh, ground wall, Bellman inequality. So uh, th this equation seven, uh, sorry, nine, is in the uh, is actually equal to uh, have a form of this equation 10. So we can see we have a left left term we have the function also in the right side also we have the function. If the if if we have these uh, these kind of inequalities we can rewrite in the form of 11. So here we in the in the in the equation 11 you can note that in the right hand side there is uh, there is uh, the b, we we don't have the b. So we can explicitly write this inequality in terms of the, uh, the function bt. So this is what we want to do here because we, we want uh, we want to uh, uh, represent the in inequality in, in terms of uh, the error only. So applying this inequality and uh, you do the integration and you do the simplification, we obtain this condition, the 12. So basically what it says is like uh, the error is bounded and uh, it uh, based uh, by choosing a very large value of uh, observer gain, uh, it will go. It converges very fast to the one bound, one radius of uh, lambda, which which is a constant. We can see here the lambda is a constant function. Also, you can see that rho is uh, like I mentioned before. Rho is proportional to the observer gain, so it is in the denominator. Denominator. So if you increase the omega zero you obtain a very fast convergence and also you obtain very small uh, error region. So uh, this is like uh, the same results where we obtain in all kinds of high gain observer. Uh, only the difference is in uh, other works, they use Lyapunov function to prove it. But here we, we basically, we explicitly solve the error dynamics and obtain the relation using uh, ground uh, Bellman lemma. And here you can see it's like uh, th that's a basic result. So we, we theoretically we have shown that if you increase the gain, you obtain faster convergence and smaller error bound. So we, we are going to uh, validate these uh, theoretical results using simulation. For that, we choose the, uh, the uh, damping and the stiffness terms, uh, actual, actual damping and stiffness terms as 0 0.05 and uh, beta is equal to 1. And uh, that's actual values and uh, the no nominal values, the, the one we know uh, uh, is taken as these two values. Uh, basically, it's like uh, we have a, a estimation error, error of 10 percentage and uh, we, we apply a harmonic disturbance as un unmodeled, uh, unmodeled dynamics. And the external input is considered as a as basic as sinusoidal signal. So uh, these are the parameter settings, and uh, we design the observer, and we test these cases using two two gains. One is with 50, and one is with 500. 
as mentioned in the, uh, the in the theory in the analysis if you increase you we you obtain a better performance using the observer so that is uh, that is what we uh, we can see in the table basically the table shows the uh, root mean square values of all the three errors all the states you can see if if you by increasing the gain by 10 times you you obtain a thousand times reduction in the error of position position, uh, position estimation 100 times in the velocity and 10 times uh, in the uncertainty uncertainty uh, estimation so this is the table and uh, same you, 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 uh, it shows the graphs it's like it shows basically shows the actual state and the estimated state the uh, it's very difficult to observe the differences that's why i, I put the table so here in uh, using 50 you have you can observe a small uh, error it's like not uh, notable error in the uncertainty it term by increasing uh, the uh, observer gain we can reduce or we can obtain a better estimations so basically that's a uh, uh, work we have presented in this paper and the conclusion is like uh, we designed uh, a nonlinear extent extended state observer for uh, chaotic system in this case it's a duffing home system uh, which have some uh, uncertainties, including the parametric uncertainties and uh, unmodeled dynamics. So the observer basically uses the position to estimate the velocity and the system uncertainties. And uh, we have show, theoretically shown that if you increase the observer gain, you can reduce uh, the uh, error. Also, you can obtain a very faster convergence. Also, the uh, in the simulation we obtain we obtain the uh, results that supports the theoretical claim. So basically, that's the presentation, and thank you for listening. Many thanks, Suresh. Mm, I would like to know if somebody has any question. So do you have any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Mer Daniel Melchor. Okay, my microphone was is, is now on. Okay. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Uh, just a, a question. Um, you prove the convergence of the zero to zero. By using the this inequality of uh, Wellman, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, can you put uh, the slides? I think it's nine or, or ten. I don't know. But would you put this? Uh, it's a result or this one? Yeah. Nine? Seven or nine? This one? No. Okay. This one. This one. Ah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, do do you know that the uh, do, do do you know that these parameters exist? For example, the the, the constant mu. Uh -huh. You know that the, the 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 value of this uh, constant mu? No. Ah, no. Uh, for for simulation, we can we can obtain. Actually, in the practical sense, uh, in the practical case, we don't know the parameters exactly, so uh, it's very difficult to obtain uh, uh, the yes, mu. We yes. can obtain because exponential. We can we can uh, obtain the h in, in infinity now. And based on the the columns, uh, you can apply the H infinity norm, and you can obtain the matrix norms. That that's pos possible numerically. The problem will be with the L because uh, you are showing no because it's locally Lipschitz. So in practically, it's it's actually yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pen pendulum kind of it's a energy harvester, bistable energy harvester. So you can put restrictions. Okay, my this beam is going to move maybe maximum ten centimeters. So if you know that uh, position limitations, we can obtain that one. That is one thing. Also, uh, uh, maybe it's like uh, in the paper, you, we have remarked, no need to obtain this mu and L because, uh, because you can simplify the analysis using uh, a projection, projection on, the, uh, projection on the estimations. So the only, the main important part is that uh, the, obs the observer, the gain should be positive. If the observer position is positive, uh, you obtain a Hurwitz matrix and you can guarantee convergence. 
So the other thing is like if you do oh, experimentation uh, based on your physical system, you have to adjust uh, what is the maximum omega you can go. Okay, I understand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We have still time for another question. Well, I do have some questions, actually. Yes. Uh, I was reading your work and I saw that in remark one, yes. you were talking about some bound for hat of X. I mean, this estimate that should remain in the ball of radius R, I think, yes. to obtain a Lipschitz bound. Yes. Uh, how is it warranted that these hat X is bounded? How do you warranty that? Uh, this is what uh, I mentioned in the previous uh, response. It's like uh, it's actually it's a, a bistable system. Uh, that mm -hmm. mechanical system in real world have a maximum uh, displacement. Okay, so yeah, like, sure. Uh, for, for the specific system, right? Yeah. And this, the simulation also raised some questions to me because you were using the same initial conditions for the system and the observer. Uh -huh. And so I, I, I'm unable to appreciate the performance of the observer. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yes. because you have the same initial conditions for the yes. observer and yes. the system. So mm -hmm. how how do I know that the, the observer is actually working? Uh, sorry, actually, we, this one we presented a short paper, no? So we tried to restrict the results section. Actually, it will work if you change the if you change the initial conditions. Uh, yeah. The system is chaotic, so it have if you change the initial conditions, it ha it will have very very different dynamics. But uh, it actually worked. It it actually works. Uh, even if you change the initial conditions, uh, maybe the converge it will take more time to converge. But it always converges because we oh, have right. always worked. Uh -huh. And the third question was concerning the the real system. Uh, you presented simulation results. Do you have yeah. the real system in your in your university? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, the second author, Ulysses Montrigan, he's doing master thesis uh, actually okay. he constructed uh, the prototype and uh, like uh, he uh, that uh, it, it, we started experimenting uh, for initially we started the experiment real time, that real okay. time. yeah and okay. it is producing the three basic dynamics it's like interval oscillations interval oscillations and chaotic now now we are working on the identification of parameters so the system yeah. is actually is uh, working as expected uh, and so we, we have a laser sensor for measuring the position. And, and first, we will identify the, the plan is to identify the um, uh, parameters first, then we will design the observer, then controlling. Mm -hmm. Very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for the questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Our, ne our next speaker is uh, Juan Lopez Solorzano. Is he here? Yes, I'm here. All right. Perfect. Uh, he's presented H infinity FIR uh, filter gain computation for distributed systems using linear matrix inequality. So please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, uh, good good afternoon to everyone. I'm uh, Juan Jose Lopez from Guanajuato University, and I will talk about a new linear matrix inequality based uh, algorithm for computation of the H infinity fear filter gain for distorted systems. Uh, first, I, I will start with an introduction where where I will talk about the theoretical ba basis of the state estimation fear filters. Then I will discuss the H infinity fear filtering problem and the algorithm proposed to compute the, the gain of the filter. Later, a numerical example will be presented where, where the algorithm is tested with using a model for a tracking problem. And finally, the conclusion will be indicated. Well, uh, these kind of filters uh, are, are based on state estimation. The state estimation suggests the desire of estimate the states of the process or system using its measurements. Since measurements are commonly conducted by noise, the state estimation suppress, su suppress that, that noise, 
which is equivalent equivalent to a filtering. A, a state estimation can be reached if we know the state space model of the system or process that we want to filter. Uh, the principal concept in state estimation is, of course, the estimation. Uh, the estimation can be a posteriori or a priori. And the difference between them is that the a priori estimation is the one that is obtained for a discrete time index k using measurements until k minus one. By the other hand, the a posterior estimation requires necessarily uh, measurements at k, while a priori does not. Uh, the estimation er error is the is the difference between the estimation and the real value of the states or a uh, pseudo ground truth if it is not known. Uh, a uh, state estimation is based on stochastic processes, so the covariance matrix of errors are uh, are needed in uh, to compute almost all the filters. Uh, well, it is desirable uh, that our estimation or estimator works as a fear filter because fear filtering offers more stability, less errors and more robustness uh, than other kind of filters. To, to use the state estimators as fee filters, we need to extend the space, state space model on a, on a horizon. The extension comes from a discrete time index M from a discrete time index K. We will, uh, we will obtain uh, in this extension N linear uh, equations. Uh, this uh, N uh, N is the number of points between uh, M and K, or, or the number of points in the horizon. Uh, this, this new system of N linear equations can be regretted in one, in one linear block matrix equation. The, these new block matrix e e equations will be used to develop the different kind of fear filters. Uh, well, uh, uh, in our case of a study, we, we should develop the H infinity fear filter. This filter uh, is the one that in, in that the finite impulse response or the gain of the filter uh, is the one that minimizes the H infinity norm of the disturbance to error transfer function. The H infinity norm of the disturbance to error transfer function is defined as the radio, ra ratio of be be between the two norm of the estimation error and the two norm of the disturbance. In this case, uh, two, in this case uh, we will add two proper weights uh, to, to the transfer function because, uh, because with that, with this, with these weights, we can obtain a better minimization. Uh, the selected weights for the norm is the co are the estimation error covariance and the uh, estimation error covariance matrix and the disturbance covariance matrix. Uh, this minimization has a problem, uh, and is that the H infinity norm isn't differentiable. So we can apply direct directly. We can't uh, apply the the derivative uh, di uh, directly and equality to zero. So the the minimization we will do it with numerical appro approximations. Uh, linear matrix inequalities or LMI are the, are proposed as the numerical method for our minimization because we can define an, uh, a new variable, in this case, gamma square, uh, a, and we can say that is greater than the H infinity norm. And if we can minimize, mi, minimize uh, the, bar, the variable gamma, then the, the H infinity norm is minimized minimize too. Uh, well, uh, to solve the inequality as an LMI, LMI first we we have to write this inequality as linear. Uh, before working with the inequality, we need a new state space model where uh, it is desired that the disturbance is the 
uh, the input and the estimation error the output. Uh, as probably as previously I men mentioned it, uh, the estimation error is the difference between the estimation and the real value of the state. The the real value of the state could be taken mathematically from the state space model. Uh, the fear estimation uh, can be of, uh, by, can be defined by using a discrete convolution convolution operation, where where the gain of the filter h it is is convolved with a measurement error uh, vector y. Uh, both equation can be subtracted uh, to obtain a new equation for the estimation error. Uh, uh, the we can see that the estimation error is fun is function of the gain or the or the finite impulse response. So uh, also that is 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 function of the block matrices of the extended space state space model, or the the initial the initial value of the of the horizon X M. Uh, the disturbance vector uh, y and the mes measurement noise vector b. Uh, we can select uh, the 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 initial value, the disturbance vector, and the measurement noise vector as the states for the new state space model. And by using the column matrix rule, we can arrive to uh, our new model where the disturbance is the input and the estimation error the output. Uh, with this, we will work with this uh, state space model to, to, to solve as an inequality. Uh, uh, for doing that, first consider the dissipativity inequality on a fin finite, finite uh, horizon. Uh, this is a Lyapunov theorem for stability in, in a system. And it says that the storage energy of the system must be lower than the supply energy of the system. is 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 only for uh, stability of the in in a system. Uh, well, we choose the storage function uh, as as the quadratic form of the state multiplied by a positive definite matrix K. Uh, the supply function can be obtained as another form of the H infinity norm. That uh, then we obtain a new inequality. This inequality can be rewritten involving the new state space model and considering that samples beyond the horizon can be not considered in pure filtering, which uh, allow us to uh, regroup in one or in only one uh, in only one sum. Uh, we we can regroup uh, the last sum uh, as a as a quadratic form uh, with the, with the state and the disturbance uh, uh, beyond the the inequality, and and we can say that for uh, that the inequality holds uh, for each value in the horizon. Only if the matrix theta is a negative definite matrix, but by this way we can minimize minimize the H infinity norm using a block matrix which only depends on the gain of the filter and the extended state space matrix, not in the uh, state variables. We're still having a problem with the, the with this inequality, and it is that it has nonlinearities, and we can uh, use it as uh, as LMI. Uh, well, for solving these problems, we first will let's look at the where the the nonlinearities exist. Uh, first, uh, we will define the weights. Uh, the uh, for the estimation error we 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 will have the key, its uh, matrix covariance error uh, and it can be obtained as the averaging of the estimation error in quadratic form uh, the result can be rewritten in terms of uh, the gain h and regroup it as a block matrix uh, equation uh, 
The disturbance coverages is a diagonal matrix where its elements are the coverages of the noises, the disturbance and the measurement noise. Uh, well, replacing replacing the weights on the in, into the inequality, we can decomp de decompose it in, in a new form in which we introduce new matrices to reduce the inequality and obtain a new form that can be linearized using inequalities terms. Uh, well, uh, we, in the matrix J, the, that is a, a, an auxiliar matrix, uh, we can see the quadra we can see the quadratic form for the for the gain. So, so the, this uh, this is a problem for the LMI. Uh, well. Uh, continuing with with the proceeding, we apply the sure complement to the inequality and represent it as a new uh, inequality. This new inequality has two nonlinearities. The first one is the 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 one that I mentioned uh, with the with the matrix J, uh, and it has a quadratic form of the gain H. And the second nonlinearity is the inversion of the matrix K. Well, we I, we will solve these uh, nonlinearities. The lo, the nonlinearity with respect to J can be abo uh, avoided uh, by using a new variable zeta, such that this variable is greater than the quadratic term in H. By, the, by this way, we can rewrite the inequality and applying a short complement to obtain a new LMI that relates the new variable zeta with the quadratic term. No, we will use this new variable to replace the quadratic term in J. So this new definition in J does, doesn't have a, any nonlinearity. The nonlinearity with respect to K can be avoided if we multiply the inequality by the two sides for the following matrices. For the following matrix, uh, no, uh, we have a, a LMI that can be used to solve the minimization problem. Uh, well, uh, the 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 H infinity field field filter gain can be or computed by minimize, minimizing uh, gamma gamma squared subject to the LMIs as a constraint. And we add a third con quadratic constraint that says that we must verify that the variable zeta is equals or quasi equals to the quadratic uh, term. Uh, to reach this uh, third constraint, uh, we developed the following uh, algorithm. Uh, 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 in this algorithm, the minimization uh, is doing it by literal increasing steps for zeta and verifying that the difference between the quadratic term and zeta is less than a, a gap that is selected by the user. If the difference is greater than this gap, then the algorithm is ended and the gain is obtained. Uh, I have this algorithm that is explained graphically, graphically uh, more uh, uh, after. Well, the 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 minimization, uh, this this minimization and the algorithm can be solved using any software that supports LMI. Uh, and when the gain is obtained, it can be used to to obtain the estimation and the estimation uh, error covariance. Well, uh, there is there is a, a numerical ex example to test the behavioral of the algorithm, and we uh, we use a, a model from a radar tracking problem. In the tracking problem, it is desired to estimate the distance between between the two cars. So we assign two states that will be the distance of the car and the velocity of the cars. Uh, that is supposed to be constant, but considering that it's disturbed. Uh, the the status the state space model you see used in the following where is is the following uh, where uh, tau is the period sample sample of the signal uh, w 
W E W is the velocity disturbance and B is the measurement noise. In the test, we want to show the behavioral of the algorithm, so the disturbance and the measurement noise will be considered as, as white white Gaussian noises. Ah, uh, uh, well, the behavioral of the algorithm is shown in the following figures. In the left figure, uh, we show the minimization of gamma as function of the variable zeta. We can see that as zeta is increased, gamma has a smooth minimization until it reaches a minimum. But in the right figure, we show that the minimum that is found isn't the minimum that we are looking for. The right figure shows the comparison between uh, the, the variable zeta and the quadratic term. It is visible that for small values of zeta, the, the variables match, but as zeta increase, uh, the quadratic, uh, the quadratic terms and zeta uh, start they, their values start to diverge. So in uh, we have to stop the algorithm before they start to uh, to diverge, and this is the value of gamma and the and the value of of the of the gain that we are looking for. Uh, uh, we also obtain the estimation with the UFIR filter as benchmark because it is considered the most robust fear filter. And one way to determine determine if we if we obtain a good estimation is that the estimation must be more accurate than the than the UFIR, UFIR gain. And in this case, this statement is full file. Uh, well, as conclusion of this work, we can say that a uh, numer uh, numerical approximation is required to obtain the H infinity field, field filter gain. Thus, we we developed the LM LMI based algorithm to solve the minimization problem. Uh, the, the gain of the H infinity field filter by uh, by this method is only obtained once, so the filter uh, works as an unbiased um, um, uh, field filter. Uh, the example seen in this work only is for demonstrating the behavioral of the algorithm because the white Gaussian case can be solved easily with a Kalman filter or a no-fear filter. For further works, uh, the H-infinity uh, fear filter will be tested under non-Gaussian disturbance where we expect that the filter will be as robust as the O-fear filter, but, but more accurate. Uh, this is my this is my reference and that's all. Uh, thanks. Any all right. Thank you very much. Mm, do we have any questions? We have we are we have just a little time to to make some questions here. Any questions? Well, I was I was wondering actually uh, about the the LMIs that you present in Lemma two, I think. Lemma. Uh, you have an LMI uh, in your paper, which you, has the number twenty seven, and you are searching for x and the inverse of x at the same time. But this is a non-convex problem, so um, I, I wonder if there is some problem or mistake because you cannot search for both the inverse and the, the the matrix otherwise it's not an LMI it's the expression 27 I think oh yes 27. yeah so I wonder if if this is right or perhaps it was a typo perhaps some some part was wrong oh yes uh, oh uh, yes this is not the final uh, Matrix, this, uh, this can be uh, avoided by it's like I presented in the by multiplying the matrix by a diagonal X uh, and the diagonal X and the identity matrix. All right, in that case, perhaps at this paragraph, you shouldn't use the expression LMI. Yes, perhaps you can inequality. say uh, such that the following inequalities yes. uh, is solvable. For, yes, for I, uh, yes, I miss the the correct uh, inequality. All right. Another 
uh, remark that I wanted to do is concerning the, the the values of your your gamma at the minimization plot in Figure One. You have the the top of this figure. You you show gamma, right? So you are talking about an attenuation level. Normally, if you have an attenuation level, you expect values which are below one, and you uh, are yes. having values of the order of 20, 23, and so on. So there is some minimization taking place, but there is no attenuation, actually. Yes, right, so. uh, the, val the values in gamma is for the addition of the weights. OK. Yes, if, if the, the disturbance to error transfer mm -hmm. function is weighted in this case. If the weights right. are the identity matrix, the, mm -hmm. then the values of gamma will be on one. Below on, one. Uh -huh. Okay. But in this right. case, R is a weighted function, so the values are bigger. All right. It's for the Thank weights. You. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Marco Gomez. Yes. Thank you. All right. He is presenting sa safe sliding mode control. Yes. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, I will present the work entitled Safe Sliding Mode Control. That, uh, this work is in collaboration with Christopher Diego Cruz Ancona and Professor Leonid Friedman. Uh, the outline of the presentation is the following. First, I provide the problem statement that uh, we are addressing. Um, then I present some preliminary results that are at the basis of the main results of this uh, work, that is the introduction of the notion of the uh, safe sliding mode control. And I conclude with a numerical example and some comments. Well, uh, we are considering this class of systems where X is the state, uh, U is the input control input, uh, F and G are uh, local ellipses uh, functions, and the uh, uncertain terms are represented by this delta from Q. Now, uh, in the presentation, I'm just considering this, um, this class of uncertain term, but in the paper, we also consider some uh, uncertain terms in the input matrix. Uh, I decided to do this just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, the only thing that we ask for the uncertain term to know is uh, a bond, uh, which is represented by the function rho of t. Um, okay, the bond of the norm of the uncertain term, right? Now, uh, the specific problem that we are addressing can be read as follows. Uh, given an unsafe region in the state space, how can we design a robust controller such that the solution of the closed loop system avoids uh, such an unsafe set and achieves asymptotic stability in spite of uncertainties and disturbances, which are included within the term delta? Uh, the problem can be illustrated by this figure from here. Uh, the ball in yellow uh, represents the unsafe set. Uh, and what we are looking for is for a given initial condition, can how can we uh, reach the origin of the of the system in closed loop, avoiding this unsafe set? Right. Uh, just to give a bit of formality to to the problem, let me uh, define formally define uh, what I call a, a safe system. Uh, the system is safe if for any x zero within a set x calligraphic zero of initial conditions. There exists a controller such that the closed loop solution uh, avoids the closure of the uh, set D, uh, where this uh, set D is open and is representing the unsafe set. Uh, we ask that this set D is opened, uh, that does not intersect the, uh, the set of the uh, initial conditions, and that it doesn't contain the it doesn't contain the origin. Is what we ask for uh, the unsafe set. Right now, let me uh, present some preliminary results that um, we need for um, for our main results. Uh, the preliminary results uh, consists in the um, 
controller design of safety controllers, control design of safety. Uh, so we are considering this class of nominal system without uncertain terms. And uh, the results on the result on which uh, we depart for uh, the introduction of the safe sliding mode control is this one. Uh, in the reference one is proof that if there exists a radially unbounded uh, lower bounded and continuously differentiable function W such that uh, satisfies these four conditions, then the nominal system will be safe and asymptotically stable with a feedback control, right? Uh, so this is the, uh, the departing point in order to uh, introduce uh, the notion of uh, safe uh, sliding mode control. What does it imply this, uh, this result? Well, uh, we can construct a formula W. We have a constructive formula for uh, this function W, which is actually, if we look, like, if we look at the uh, second uh, property of this function, uh, we can um, realize that uh, this function W is a Lyapunov-like function. So uh, the natural question is how can we construct this, uh, this function W? Uh, the answer is uh, in this expression from here. Here B is a control Lyapunov function and B is a control barrier function. Uh, I'm omitting uh, what a control barrier function is, but just believe me, this control barrier function satisfies some similar properties to uh, these uh, four properties that we have here, right? Now, with this uh, formula for W, we have um, also a constructive uh, formula for uh, a nominal control given by this expression from here, um, so that uh, if we have this uh, function W, we always can construct a nominal control such that the uh, closed loop solution of the system of the nominal system will be safe and asymptotically stable, at least for a set of initial conditions, right? But what we are looking for is not um, safety and stability for the nominal system, but for the uncertain system. So the natural uh, question is how can we robustify this uh, nominal design? design? Um, there are some preliminary results uh, on input to state safety uh, reported in this reference two and three. Uh, this uh, concept of input to state safety is inspired by the concept of uh, input to state stability. And uh, this class of controllers can achieve uh, safety despite the uncertain terms, but not stability. So the, the question is how can we uh, ensure uh, not only safety, but also stability in spite of uncertain and disturbance terms? Uh, well, what we are proposing is a control scheme in this form. Yeah. We depart from this nominal control and then we add a robust controller. Um, how can we design this robust controller? Well, uh, we want to rely on uh, a sliding mode control, but uh, if we want to uh, use classical sliding mode control, uh, it's, not, it's not easy to ensure uh, safety and stability um, at the same time. What is the problem with uh, this? Um, with using this, um, this framework, where it can be illustrated by these uh, two figures from here. Uh, the figure on the right illustrates the case in which the sliding manifold intersects the uh, unsafe set. And uh, the figure on the right uh, illustrates the case in which uh, we might have uh, a safe sliding manifold, that is uh, a manifold that does not intersect the unsafe set, but still in the reaching phase, we uh, the trajectory can pass through this uh, unsafe set. So this is a problem. Now, what we are proposing to uh, avoid this or to solve this this problem uh, is um, depart from uh, this main assumption uh, that is uh, we suppose that there exists a function W like uh, as the one that I already mentioned satisfying these four properties, they are the same uh, for, a nominal, um, for a nominal system, right? So what we are supposing is that we can construct a nominal control such that the system, the nominal system is safe and asymptotically stable. And then departing from this uh, nominal design, uh, we are going to construct the uh, robust controller, right? Now, uh, how can we do this? Uh, 
we take inspiration from the Leopold Redesign uh, ideas. The idea consists in compensating the, uh, the negative, um, sorry, uh, the idea consists in ensuring uh, the negative sign of the time derivative of the Lapinov like function. I'm showing this in this expression from here. Uh, if we take the time derivative of the Lapinov like function W, then I will get this expression from here. Uh, the first term is already uh, less than zero, but uh, because of the uncertain term, I lost this. Um, we lost this uh, negative uh, sign of the time derivative, right? So the idea is of the Lyapunov redesign uh, is to compensate this um, this uh, this term within the time derivative, and then, of course, via the uh, robust controller, and then from this uh, to ensure asymptotic and safety, uh, asymptotic stability and safety of the system, right? Now, uh, okay, with this in mind. Uh, a natural choice would be uh, for a sliding variable uh, would be uh, this one from here, so that the uh, sliding manifold uh, could be uh, defined in this way. But the problem with this is that uh, this manifold is actually not safe. Uh, let us see it with an example taken from the reference one. Uh, we consider a planar system, X, uh, and in the coordinates x1 and x2, uh, we propose this on say set characterized by this expression from here. And uh, again, from the reference one, we can construct a function, a Lyapunov like function W uh, uh, that is constructed via control Lyapunov function and a control barrier function given by this expression from here. And uh, the directional derivative of this uh, function W uh, would be equal to this expression from here on the right. And of course, here, uh, this uh, vector could be uh, an input matrix or a function G in, in our setting, uh, in our system. Now, uh, if we equal this to zero, then we can construct the manifold that I already, um, I already showed in uh, two slides ago. Uh, well, the, slide in the manifold, the first manifold that we propose, results in uh, what we are already seeing in this figure from here. Uh, the continuous line, the black continuous line represents uh, represents uh, the equality of this uh, to zero. So here we are, uh, we can see two main things. The first one is that uh, the manifold is disconnected and the second one is that uh, it intersects the on say set. So that's why I was saying that the manifold as such uh, is unsafe. So uh, this inspired the definition of a safe sliding manifold, uh, still departing from the gradient of the, of the Lyapunov like function W, but constructing uh, this set uh, calligraphic F uh, in order to avoid the unsafe, um, the unsafe uh, part of the manifold, right? Now, the idea of this onset, uh, pardon, uh, sorry, uh, the idea of this um, uh, set F is that it has to include, of course, the unsafe uh, set D, but at the same time exclude uh, the, the unsafe uh, subset of the manifold, right? So we assume that this uh, set F can be constructed in such a way that uh, this uh, manifold is connected. Uh, now, uh, now it is clear that uh, if we can uh, if we can uh, force this expression to be a zero in a finite time, then we can recover uh, uh, stability and safety of the closed loop system. Uh, and here is where uh, the ideas of the uh, sliding mode control enters. Uh, we can achieve this by this controller this uh, unit controller where sigma bar is uh, given in terms of a sliding variable and another matrix matrix that I'm not defining here. And the gain K is uh, selected in this way with Q uh, greater than zero. So uh, what we have uh, right now is, uh, uh, now, now we have um, a formula for constructed a safe sliding manifold, but still we have to, um, uh, to solve the case um, 
uh, sorry, the reaching phase uh, state, right? How can we uh, design a safe reaching, safe, uh, reaching phase? Uh, is the question. Actually, we have uh, two options, two possible solutions. The first one is the one that is present, presented in the paper, and the second one uh, I will um, allow myself to present it, uh, but is under preparation for a um, for a journal version of the paper. Uh, in the first option, we have um, the idea consists in uh, using two controllers, two different controllers. The first controller uh, defined in this region of the state space. Um, has um, the objective to, um, to force the trajectories of the system uh, to the origin, uh, uh, sorry, to the sliding manifold. And uh, the second one uh, just is, is just to try to, um, not, does not allow to the uh, system trajectory enter to the uh, unsafe set, right? The idea of the second option is uh, redesigned the sliding variable. We can uh, see it from this expression from here. Uh, actually, uh, we have the same robust controller with, uh, uh, with this sliding variable. And uh, the sliding variable is modified by this function phi of t. This function phi of t uh, is given in such a way that satisfies these three properties. Uh, if there is any question, I can come back to this uh, to this slide in the in the questions. Uh, I just I will just uh, jump it. So uh, to conclude with a numerical example, uh, we consider this system taken from reference one. Uh, the simulated perturbation is this one from here, and I will present uh, first the result with the nominal con with the nominal control. Um, uh, we uh, we can see that. Uh, we have safety of the system, but for this initial condition, but uh, not asymptotical, uh, not asymptotic stability, right? Uh, this change when we apply the uh, proposed robust controls. Uh, here I'm showing the um, reaching phase, which I call switching reaching phase, uh, the first option in the reaching phase that I presented. And we can see that we converge to the uh, safe sliding manifold, and we keep it the we keep the trajectory uh, there until uh, it converges to the origin. Right here, there is another initial condition. Uh, it's a bit different. Indeed, here is um, we can see that uh, there is a switching. The switching is because of the uh, switch of the controllers in the different uh, different zones of the state space. And uh, here we have um, the solution with um, the simulation with the reaching phase considering the second option. And uh, the, the, the function phi is designed in this way, and uh, we can converge again uh, to the sliding uh, manifold uh, in a safe way. Uh, here, another simulation with a different initial condition. And in contrast with the uh, switching reaching phase, we can observe that uh, well, the trajectory uh, looks better, right? Uh, it converges to the sliding manifold, and then we converge to the origin in spite of the uncertain interval, right? So um, quick conclusions, we have introduced the notion of a safe sliding manifold. Um, based on this uh, safe sliding manifold, we introduce a robust controller for safety and stabilization. And a uh, future research work includes the implementation of a higher, higher order slide mode control or uh, the application to robotic systems. So from my side, it's all. Thank you very much for listening. So Thank I you, Marco. Questions. Thank you. Do you have any questions, any one of the attendees? We have still time for one question. Yeah, uh, Daniel Melchor, please go ahead. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, I, if I understand well, your whole controller be, uh, consists of the nominal controller plus the new control that you call robust control. Is yes. that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, can you show me the expression for the nominal control? And yes, yes, yes. And it means that the, the two controls act uh, for the whole time, or you apply the robust control after a period of time? No, 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 for the whole time. For the whole period. time. 
Yeah, here is the expression for the nominal controller. Okay. Okay, I see. Uh, and what is B? B? No, uh, yeah, B, B can be indeed B is over a uh, sliding variable sigma also. So uh, um, when we are on the uh, on the sliding manifold, actually, a nominal control is zero here, but not because we are forcing to be zero, because just because this is the formula provided by this um, by this approach. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 was, that, yeah, that was my question. Yeah, yeah zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would write a paper, and this is interesting to, to see this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, I had a I had a small observation. Actually, I got confused with the figure one in your paper because you were describing several sets, and the inner set was concerning a w zero of x, which was greater than zero, and the one that was the biggest set was something that was w zero bigger than eta. And I thought yeah. eta was positive, and well, the the relationship does not stand. No. Yeah, maybe there is a typo there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. In the numerical example that you presented, you have some w zero of x, which is claimed to be positive according to assumption three, but in your numerical example, it is less than minus eta, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. Mi minus sixteen, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, there is a typo there. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, but well. it was just the, for the construction of what uh, in the presentation I'm calling uh, set F, but in the in the paper, uh, sorry for the inconsistencies, uh, it's uh, the uh, set D zero eta. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. That's the relation. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I have one question. Because uh, I couldn't find uh, any on in your presentation about the shape of your uh, unsafe region, and, uh, and I couldn't see any assumption uh, that is, uh, is is that convex, well connected, for instance. Uh, that that unsafe yeah 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 it, it has to be open and connected. Okay and. Okay, and what about the equilibrium? The equilibria, because you, you assume also some match disturbances, but uh, I, I couldn't find any anything about the equilibrium. What what uh, can happen when your equilibria or your equilibrium point is uh, or crosses some uh, uh, of the region? No, no, no. Uh, the set D has not to. Uh, the set D, the set D. Sorry. Cannot contain the origin. Okay. Yeah, yeah because otherwise it would be a contradiction. I, I cannot achieve asymptotic stability if the set and, and safety if the set D contains the origin. But the origin is, is the only equilibrium. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm supposing that. Yes, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, we are very short of time. We can move forward to the next speaker, which is um, Jorge Enrique Ayala. Yes. All right. Could you please start? Yes. Right I'm away. just going. Thank to... you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's actually on, on the screen. Yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. Well, and um, good afternoon. I'm Jorge Enrique Ayala Carrillo, and I'm going to present the article Backstepping Control for Tracking of Solenoid Bulb Actuated Pneumatic Continuums of Robots. The co authors of the article are Cristian Trejo Ramos, Ernesto Elguin Diaz, and Vicente Parravega. And all the authors are affiliated with Center for Research and Advanced Studies in the Department of Robotics and Advanced Manufacturing. Here is the outline of the presentation. And nowadays, pneumatic continuums of robots are the most widely researched soft robot type due to their highly compliant behavior. However, they are complex systems due to the nonlinearities uh, of the soft robot itself and the ones from the pneumatic actuation dynamics. 
then the control of pneumatic continuums of robots remains uh, an open problem in the literature of soft robotics. So first, I will discuss briefly the state of the art of control of pneumatic continuums of robots, specifically how the backstepping technique has been implemented in this type of robots, and I will present a contribution of the article. Then I will present the dynamic models of the soft robot and the pneumatic pressure. Afterwards, I will pre um, afterwards the backstepping control designed is proposed for the tracking of a pneumatic continuums of robot configuration, achieving exponential stability. And finally, simulation numerical simulations are presented, discussions are addressed, and conclusions are given. Closed loop dynamics of a pneumatic continuums of robot or PCSR differs substantially from its counterpart, the rigid robot. This can be seen in figure number one, where the PCSR uh, considered for this work is shown. The PCSR composed of an elastomeric material with embedded pneumatic chambers that produce deformation when they are pressurized. The PCSR control design has been mainly addressed by assuming a simplified robot deformation dynamics or by neglect neglecting pneumatic dynamics. However, the pneumatic control for PCSRs with complete dynamics is still an open problem in the literature. Currently, model-based control has been explored for PCSR because of its advantages in efficiency and accuracy, despite its downsides in complexity and practical viability. Among these model-based control techniques, backstepping is a well-known control strategy that has already been addressed to the formable body systems equipped with pneumatic actuations. In the work of Wang in 2018, they designed a backstepping controller for a one degree of freedom soft, de degree of freedom soft act actuator as the one shown in figure 2A. In the work of Franco in 2021, backstepping was implemented for a soft robot as the one shown in figure 2B. However, both of these works uh, simplified the dynamics of the soft robot. The work of De La Santina in 2021 considers complete soft robot dynamics for a piston-driven constant curvature soft robot with the disadvantage of limiting pressure by the piston volume. This leads us to the contribution of this article, which are the modeling the pneumatic pressure dynamics of the formable chambers and obtain, obtaining a coupled dynamic system together with the dynamics of a soft, ro soft robot and the design of a backstepping control for a solenoid valve actuated pneumatic soft robot with exponential stability of tracking error variables. In this section, the dynamic models of both the soft robot and its pneumatic uh, pressure uh, and, and its pneumatic pressure are presented. Uh, first, the assumptions made for the soft robot model are that the relative distance among particles is not constant. Radial and circumferential deformation are constrained. There is a backbone line representing body deformation and viscoelastic forces are linear. On the other hand, the assumptions made for the pressure in embedded pneumatic chambers are that there are no air leaks, the gas inside the chamber is perfect and behaves according to the ideal Gauss law, the pneumatic actuation is an isentropic process, and the pressure and temperature in the chamber is homogeneous. Under assumptions 1 to 4, the Lagrangian-like finite dimensional representation of the PCSR can be obtained with equation number 1, where Q are the generalized deformation coordinates composed by length L, azimuth angle phi, and curvature kappa. All these, all these deformation coordinates are measured from the backbone line of the soft robot, which in figure 3 is the segmented red line. The difference between a traditional Lagrangian representation and the one in equation number one are the viscoelastic forces tau sub bs, which are modeled through the kelvin Boyd model. Generalized forces tau are obtained as a projection from the actuation space formed by relative pressures in the pneumatic chambers to the configuration space by the input matrix BQ. The input matrix BQ can be obtained with equation number three, and considering three pneumatic chambers, the input matrix is a square matrix full rank, except when the curvature of the soft robot equals zero, which is a singularity in the model. In the PCSR considered for this work, pneumatic, the three pneumatic chambers are evenly distributed at the cross-section area of the PCSR, as shown in figure number four. 
therefore, um, we have a fully actuated system because we have three control inputs in the form of the relative pressures in the chambers and three configuration variables. The pneumatic pressure dynamics for the formal chambers is obtained with equation number four, where it is important to mention that the volume and standard derivatives are in function of all the deformation coordinates Q and dot Q. Using the ISO standard 6358, the volumetric flow can be obtained with equation number five, as long as there is an electronomatic circuit with reservoir and solenoid bulbs as the one shown in figure number five. In equation five of the volumetric flow, there is a flow function psi, which is a diagonal positive definite matrix with elements modeled as a piecewise continuous function, uh, as we can see in the last equation of the slide. This flow function depends on the downstream pressure PD and the upstream pressure PU. And its behavior is shown in figure number six, when if we have choked flow, the behavior of the function is linear. And if we have a non, and if we have subsonic flow, the behavior is a nonlinear function. Upstream and downstream pressures are defined according to the electronomatic circuit side with respect to the solenoid bulb where there is a greater or smaller pressure respectively. Therefore, when we are in a charge regime, the upstream pressure is defined as the reservoir pressure and the downstream pressure, pressure is the pressure of the soft robot. And the volumetric flow has a direction as the one shown in figure 7a. While when we are in discharge regime, the upstream pressure is the pressure of the soft robot and the downstream pressure is the one from the atmospheric pressure and the volumetric flow has the direction shown in figure 7p. In this section, the backstepping control design for the PCSR complete dynamics is briefly explained. So for about the pneumatic pressure dynamics are presented in these equations where BP is defined, B sub P is defined as a pressure input matrix, which is also full rank. And we can express these equations in a compact form as these ones. And we can see that it already has a strict feedback form. And therefore, we can apply backstepping directly to it. To do so, we define the state vector x, the tracking reference xd, and the errors tilde x1 and tilde x2. And the error dynamics arise as in equation number nine. Now, for the backstepping control design, I will not explain every step in detail given that it is a very well-known control technique. Backstepping error variables are defined as C1, C2, and C3, and we use tilde X2 and X3 are as virtual control inputs and choose the stabilizing functions omega 1 and omega 2 as follows, and we propose the control in equation number 11, where it is important to mention that the control depends on the time derivative of the stabilizing function omega 2. The stabilizing function omega 2 has nonlinear functions that depend on the full knowledge of the dynamics of the soft robot, which in an experimental environment may, may be very difficult to achieve. But in a numerical environment, as is the one presented in this article, we can obtain this time derivative with the use of robust derivatives as Levant. Then exponential convergence of error variables C is shown in equation number 12, and we conclude that all the backstepping error variables converge to the region, as well as the configura error configuration variables tilde 1 and tilde 2. Meanwhile, the state X3 that corresponds, corresponds to the pressure converges to the stabilizing function omega 2. If we evaluate the stabilizing function omega 2 with the desired configuration, we obtain that it acts as the desired absolute pressure for the pressure dynamics. Next, the simulator and numerical results are presented. Simulations were conducted in MATLAB Simulink in a variable step integrator OD23 TV solver. The initial conditions for length, azimuth angle, and curvature are presented. And for pressure, the initial conditions correspond to the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Then in figure number eight, we present the parameters of the soft robot and from the pneumatic system. For the soft robot, these are real parameters for uh, of a real soft robot that was used 
in previous works in our research group of soft robotics. Moving forward to the results, the desired configuration consists of incrementing exponentially a length, azimuth angle, and curvature while we are in the charge regime that corresponds to the first 10 seconds of the desired configuration. Uh, but when we are in the discharge regime, length and curvature decrease as azimuth angle remains constant. In figure number nine, uh, configuration coordinates are shown in the top row and tracking errors in the bottom row. And we can see that the small tracking errors show that the control achieves the tracking task appropriately. Finger, figure number 10 shows the pressure in nomadic chamber against the stabilizing function omega 2. And as it was proved in slide 14, the stabilizing function is the reference for the pressure. Uh, in the top row of figure 11, the control signal and backstepping error variables are shown, which uh, as we can see, they have a very brief settling time. And in the bottom row, we see in the flow function side that when we are in charge regime, nearly all pneumatic chambers have a choked flow, which is a constant one. But when we are in the discharge regime, we have subsonic flow in all pneumatic chambers. Moving forward to the discussions, the flow function psi imposes a hard nonlinearity in the pneumatic systems, uh, which induces a control switching condition and also a switching be uh, dynamical behavior for each regime. This is an issue that deserves further consideration. And while both pneumatic regimes are considered in this work, uh, the volumetric flow is obtained by a simplified model that still remains to be validated by experiments with a pneumatic software actuator. The main drive drawback of our scheme is that it is model dependent, and this can be mitigated with an adaptive backstepping scheme at the expense of requiring a regressor or by a neural network backstepping. Finally, conclusions. The configuration tracking of a novel pneumatic continuum of robot is addressed with a model-based backstepping control, and we consider the full dynamics of both subsystems. The proposed backstepping control guarantees tracking with stability in the sense of Lyapunov based on a constructive method, and we designed the reference pressure for the pneumatic pressure dynamics by the backstepping uh, scheme. Then simulations showed the expected com exponential convergence of errors considering realistic parameters corresponding to an experimental scenario of a real prototype system. And finally, as future work, it includes the design of a robust backstepping scheme as well as a model-free version with an official, efficient neural network backstepping. And also an experimental test bed to assess its real-time performance is underway. That will be all for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jorge Enrique. Do we have any questions? Yes, Daniel Melchor, please. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, just as uh, a small question, how do you design the gains K? Can you put the design? Uh, because in example, you, you, you selected the, the, the three, I, I, yes, you can see yes. K1, K2, K3, identical design. And yes. What's the reason of this? What happened? Did you choose a different gains? Mm -hmm. Well, the feedback gains were obtaining congruence with the stability test, and the only condition for them were that they were uh, positive. So I, I didn't. Well, I, I proved with different values uh, for K1, K2, and K3, but the performance was not very different uh, if I changed them between them. So in the end, I I leave, I left them to be the same value um, for just because it worked uh, nearly the same. It's strange. It's strange. Uh, I, I understand that the restriction of B positive it's, it's a natural restriction, but uh -huh. okay. It, yes. it Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Well, I, I have uh, just a few questions. Do, do we have another question from the attendees? No? Well, I, I will make a small question. Um, why do you consider that being model dependent is a disadvantage of your scheme? 
Uh, well, it is a disadvantage if we um, try to implement this scheme in an experimental scenario, mm -hmm. because to know exactly all the parameters of the soft robot is very difficult as we have viscoelastic forces that has not already been characterized properly in the state of the art. And also the measurement of the deformation coordinates of the soft robot, I, I mean length, curvature, and azimuth, mm -hmm. is a very complex vision problem, which is, is still an open problem in soft, robot, soft robotics. So I think okay. to have a model dependent, completely model dependent scheme will be very difficult to implement and obtain the desired results. All right, uh, and the backstepping technique that you were using, is it a standard one or do you have any modification of the standard backstepping technique? It is the standard one in like the one from the 90s, 90s and yeah. we're currently working on a robust backstepping scheme, uh, adding sliding mode control to not depend on the full knowledge of the dynamics of the soft robot, but the one presented here is the the standard one. All right. Well, it's all from my side. Are there any more questions? None. All right. So here we will conclude the session. This was room number three, automatic control session number two. Uh, thank you very much for all for your attendance, and we'll see you each other some other time. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you Thank for you. accepting. To <laughs> Thank you. No, on the other hand, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>